Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of All. And in this video we're going to have a look at how we can create an alternative to the array modifier that's going to be vastly superior in certain situations. So I've been making a hatch for a vehicle and I want to put some rivets along the centre line. And this is generally quite an easy thing to do. I just add in a modifier, add in an array, we don't want this on the X, we want it on the Y and I can start fiddling around with the distances. So let's up that. But actually, this is only going from the centre, so I'm going to move it to about there, and then increase that. But now I've got to guess where the centre is. Like, probably about there. It's not very exact. I guess I could start doing some maths with it, but that gets even more tedious. The alternative to this, which works, is that I could put a mirror modifier across the original object. I've just used hard ops to speed that up. And that works quite well, except it has a similar problem once I decide that I want an even number of these rivets. So in this we've got four mirrored, but the one in the center is on top of each other, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What if I wanted to G and Y that? So we have got eight, but now I've got to hope that this distance in the middle is similar to the distance there, and as soon as I start changing my offset, that's definitely not gonna be true. It's all really annoying. So what if instead of doing that, I could just come to my modifiers and add in a centered array on the Y axis, and then I can increase the offset, increase the count as much as I want, and we'll notice that if we've got an even number, it actually spaces them correctly, and suddenly we've got a much nicer place to work. So let's have a look at how we can create this centered array for free. Though if you can't be bothered to make it yourself, there is a link in the description to the Patreon where you can download this setup as well. So we'll just shift A, and I'm gonna bring in a cube to begin with. We'll just use this as our example. Now. We're going to need to go into geometry nodes. If you don't have this, then go to the bottom left hand corner or any corner, drag up, and then you're going to change this into a geometry node editor. Click on this, new. For some reason, mine starts really far out. So I'm just going to A and then from the decimal point on the number pad to zoom in. And we'll start looking at how we're going to do this. Now, the first thing is we don't actually want the geometry in this to begin with. We're going to need to set up effectively a line that our array is going to go across. We can do that if we just shift A and type in line using either a curve line or a mesh line. Now I prefer the mesh line for this. I think these settings here are more useful and we can see we've got this line. Now the way this works is what makes this really good for an array. We've got an offset so we've got however many counts. You can do this in an endpoint version but not for this. So we've got a count so we can move this more or less and each of the counts is how our offset is set. So in this instance, it's set as a Z of one. Let's change this to an X of one and a Z of zero. So now we're going along here. And what this means is we've got currently a count of four, so it's starting at the origin and it's going along from the first point. So one, then two points, then three points, then four points. And it's important to remember that one obviously is just a single point. Now if I bring that count back down to three, come into my modifier panel and apply this just so we can see what this looks like. We can see here one, two, three points because we've got a count of three. And this is all the control we are going to need. So let's set up the basic bits first and then we'll get on to how we're gonna make this a centered array. So we'll shift A, instance, we want an instance on points. Let's drag that there and then we can drag our group input and put that into the instance section. Now. These instances are only one apart at this point, so let's just move them apart a little bit more. Let's say two, and that will be perfectly joined up because our cube was too wide. Let's go to three, and we can now see that we've got a gap of one unit. For me, I use the blender units, but that'll be millimeters if I 3D print it. And we can now up this and decrease this. So perfect, that's what we want. Now we're also gonna need a realize instance. Otherwise, when we apply this, they will all disappear. And that's pretty much all we need for the instancing. We're pretty good to go at this point. What we need to do now is sort out the fact that we don't want our line starting at our origin point. We want our line somewhere else. So effectively, we want to change our start location. So at the moment, our start location would ideally be there. And we don't want to have to do this manually, we want Blender to automatically work this out as we go. So what we'll do is set up our group inputs. I'm gonna shift and D to duplicate this. And the things we're gonna want are we're gonna need a count. 
that's going to go in there and we're also going to need to deal with our offset amount now we can't just drag this in it won't work well it will it will set everything to the same value so we're going to set one value in here that's going to only affect one of the offset values so what we need to do is combine some values together so shift a and combine and we're going to combine xyz and now we can see we've separated this out and i can just drag that in there and then drag that in here and this has gone away because now you can see in our modifier panel we've got this x of zero so i can just drag that up now I don't like this being called X because we might not want it on the X axis. We'll deal with that later. So let's just come in here. So we're going to click on group to X, double click on it, and we're going to call that offset. And we'll have it probably defaulting as, let's say one. And we want a minimum value of zero. Though realistically we might not want to go down to zero, but that's fine. And a maximum whatever. So there we go. So we've got this now that we can change our count here and we can change our offset here. But what we need to do is start working out how we can control our start location. So what I'm actually gonna to do to make this neater is Shift and D that, so we've got a count there, and then we'll just create some space over here where we can do our maths. And let's put that back to three, so we can start thinking through this. So, if we have a think about this line, this line is made up of a set of three, then three, then three, because our offset is set to three. So we've got three, six, nine, 12. So this is 12 of whatever our units is long. Now, if we think about the maths of this, this is not five, which is our count times three, because this is starting at zero. So in actual fact, this is four times three. So we need to have our count as one less than it actually is. And we're gonna be using our count and our offset in this. So what we're gonna to need to do is take our count and do some maths. And we're gonna do a subtraction. So we're gonna have that there. So we want to have our count and we want to minus one from it. So that's giving us four. Then we're gonna to need to multiply this. So let's multiply that by our offset. So at this point, we've got our five we're minusing one to get four, and we're gonna multiply that by our offset, which is three, so that is gonna give us our 12. So now, once we've got that, we've got our full length of our line, but we actually only want to go half the distance away. So we're gonna to need to divide this by two. So let's do a maths divide. And we're gonna divide that by two. So we're gonna need another combined X, Y, Z node, so let's just move those across, Shift and D, and we're gonna plug that into the X, and this is going to go wrong, because it's gonna jump in the wrong direction, because at the moment, this would be, you'll notice it has gone to the correct place on the line, but it's gone the wrong side. So actually, what we want to do is instead of dividing this by two, which would mean we're still going six this way, 12 divided by two, we actually want it to go minus that, so we're just gonna change this to divided by minus two. And now this works. We've got everything sorted out. And that means that I can now change my count and everything will be centered. Do note that if it's an even number, it's still gonna have that gap. We've got our offset working. So this is basically our node. We are good to go. The only issue with this is, let's just get rid of those annotations, is that at the moment this only works in the X direction. And we probably don't only want this working in the X direction. We might want to control what direction this is in. So we're going to be using something that now exists in Blender 4.1 onwards. Now, at the time of doing this, I'm using the beta version because it hasn't been released yet, but it's coming March 16th, 2024. So by the time this is viewable, you can either go and use the beta version to get this ready or it's already out. So what we're going to do is we are going to need everything up to here, this mesh line because we're gonna use a switch and that needs a geometry output. So we can't just use the lesser bits. We're gonna to have to go all the way here. So let's control and G to group that together. And we're going to want to rename the group inputs here. You'll notice it's redone everything based on those values. And we want this to be really clear. So I'm just gonna to come to X and we're gonna call that offset again. And you'll notice we've changed that on our minor group input. And then we've still got count, which is fine. So let's tab out of that and you can see we've now got this node 
called no group where we've got our count and our offset. Oh, and it has got the value coming from another place as well because it's getting confused. So let's tab into that. You can see we've got that value here because the subtract is a value, but we know that that value is actually just the count as well. So I might actually just drag that into there. There we go. So we can actually then get rid of this value. Let's tab out of that and we're all still working. Now at this point, this has become a lot neater. So we can actually just get rid of that group input there. So actually this has made this much nicer to look at. Now I'm gonna rename this because at the moment, that's F2, this is our offset in the X value. We're gonna to want to make that Shift and D and Shift and D, these work in other directions. So what I'm gonna do is get rid of this because at the moment it is sharing its data with the one before, we want to change things around. That's F2, I'm gonna call that offset Y, and then we can tab into this, and now we can just change it. Let's drag that down to being in the Y, and we want to change that to being in the Y. And now, count to count, offset to offset, and this will work for the Y. And we'll do the same thing, F2, for offset in the Z. Let's count to count, offset to offset, and then tab in. So the other way we can do this really quickly is if we click on the node and just press Alt and S and it will filter through. So let's come up to this one as well, Alt and S, and then we're on the Z. So you don't have to do this dragging it. You can do it really quickly, just Alt and S to go through. And that will work with any node where it will just move them through. So that's quite nice. So tab back out of this and we've got everything nearly ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is come to my group input. That's Shift and D to make a new version of that we're going to want to be able to tell this what direction it's gonna go into. So let's add a new input, and we're gonna call this direction. And then we're gonna bring in our switch node, and we want to switch menu so we can see everything really clearly. And we're gonna have several options here. We're gonna have it going in the X direction, we're gonna have it going in the Y direction, and we need another one. So click, come to node, and we want a new one where our Y is gonna go into. We can also here rename all of them. So let's call that X, that Y, and that one Z. And then we'll drag that output to our points. And at the moment, it's gonna automatically be on X. We can see here, let's drag this down so we've got a bit more space. We can change this to working on the Y, and then we can change it to working on the Z. Love it. So now we can change this in whatever direction we want. Now. You could do this so that you do have a combine X, Y, Z node and you can actually put in the value for X, Y, and Z constantly. So you can do more complex movements. But generally for things like this, I'm probably gonna only have it going in one direction. So I actually want to simplify this for the way I use it. And then we're gonna drag this into our direction and we're gonna have to come to our group direction and we want to change it to menu. And now it's got X and then Y and then Z. So now we do not need this. Everything we use is here. We can change the count up and down, change the offset up and down, change the direction. So this is now a really handy node that we can just bring in using it as a modifier asset. Now, if you don't know how to use these, there's a link in the description. Also, if you wanna save yourself some time, as I said, this is available on the Patreon for anyone on the 3D design tier. So hopefully that's gonna be a useful addition to your Blender workflow. As always, if you found that useful, please do hit the like button. It really helps small channels like mine get a bit more visibility. And if you want to go so far as leaving a comment, that'd be really appreciated as well. Have a great day, guys.